welcome back to this little mini series uh, on the Players Cup 4. Thank you for coming back. I hope you enjoyed the first video. We're going to have a few more videos. Uh, we've got some really positive feedback from a few of you on the Discord. I had a couple of um, couple of messages on Facebook from various people and on groups that, have, um, that I put this video on. Uh, and a couple of things through YouTube as well from people uh, who said they really enjoyed it. So that's, that's really positive to know. Um, and yeah, and I guess if, if it is really enjoyed, I can extend it past just the Players' Cup and I can move on and kind of maybe just talk about VGC in general if people actually do want to know my opinion for some reason. But if you do, then I'm happy to share it. So um, today we will try and talk about something a little more specific. Um, I'll go into detail on this more if we do a, a kind of a more long-running series on this kind of stuff. Um, but one of the messages I got from um, someone I very much trust to share their opinion with me uh, said... Uh, to, talk, to maybe explain a little bit more about wind conditions and when I talk about wind conditions what I mean by those and, and what they can be and, and various things like that so today's team has some very clear wind conditions there are ways in which you can set up each battle to make sure that you can win at the end of it uh, ergo a wind condition you know what can, what conditions can I meet to make sure at the end of this I am left with a certain scenario or a certain group of Pokemon left together or a certain item is in a certain place or a certain there's board position whatever it might be what can I do to make sure that in the last couple of turns of the battle I know I can win by pressing button A B and C for example so um, an, an example if I have a uh, an ice type Pokemon and you have a Landorus um, I and I can make sure that at the end of the battle my ice type Pokemon is left against your Landorus and I'm faster than you, I will know that I can beat your Landorus and then thereby I win the game, right? That's a win condition. So uh, with that being said, the team we're going to use today is very much full of certain win conditions. It's a really, really cool team. Um, it's been used on the ladder to get very, very high, not by me, but by other people to get really, really high. Uh, it's been featured on some kind of famous YouTubers channels. Uh, it is Weakness Policy Special Zekrom. I, uh, actually, a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago, whatever it was, Players' Cup was announced. I started speaking to some of the guys on the Discord about uh, building our team, which team we're going to bring, are we going to build together, whatever. And I started looking at Weakness Policy Palkia paired with Comfy, um, and maybe using uh, Galarian Moltres as a, as a distraction. Da, 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 da. And then I saw this team, which was almost exactly the same team that I was building, but was Zekrom, and didn't have Galarian Moltres, but it had some other Pokemon in it. Um, a few of which I was using as well, and so I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this out. And I tried out the Zekrom, and it's just better for this team in every way. It's really, really good. Um, so, okay, so here you go. Here you can see the team. Uh, it is comprised of Comfy with the Babiri Berry, the Choice Scarf, Urshifu, Weakness Policy, Zekrom, Sugarberry, Incineroar, Life Orb, Thunderous, and of course Clefairy with Eviolite and Friend Guard. Um, for those of you who don't know, Comfy's ability is called Triage, which means it gets extra priority on healing moves. So Draining Kiss. Floral healing. Uh, one of those gives health to a, a partner Pokemon, the other takes health away from an opponent and gives it to Comfy. They both get an increased priority. Uh, I think it's plus three, which is really, really helpful. Um, it's, uh, it's a really, really cool ability and makes a, an otherwise probably not overly viable Pokemon very much viable in the meta game. It's really, really useful. That is paired with Zekrom, uh, who has the weakness policy. So <clears throat> if you haven't put it together, uh, it's, it's used on various teams, has been in the past, most commonly probably Comfy paired with Galarian Moltres in the past uh, to use Draining Kiss, which is a, a fairly weak priority move uh, to activate the weakness policy on its partner Zekrom, not dealing too much damage, but giving Zekrom plus two attack and plus two special attack, which of course makes it very, very strong uh, and deal a lot of damage. Uh, in this instance, uh, the Zekrom is max special attack, um, so it hits really really hard especially after weakness policy boost it does a lot of damage um once the electric terrains up as well after one max lightning it just deals so much damage with terravolt electric terrain it just it does so much damage it, it can do it can really really be devastating so your main aim with this team is playing comfy zekrom getting zekrom the boost and, and trying to go through teams. Now the downsides are Zekrom is not naturally that fast, especially in compared to other Pokemon in this metagame and other legendary Pokemon like Restricted Mons. So uh, the team creator, very wisely I think, um, has 
given uh, it's basically made it really really bulky Zetcom. It's got almost no speed investment at all, I think, and it, it's really really good for it. it. It's brilliant. It survives a lot more than you would ever expect, and it deals so much damage in return. Comfy can heal it with floral healing. You can also set the trick room against particularly fast teams. It has a lot. Just that that pair um, in Comfy and Zekrom has a lot more going for it than you could probably think when you first see it. Um, the supporting cast for this team, um, the the most notable supporting Pokemon is Choice Scarf, Urshifu, um, the regular Urshifu, Water Fighting, as opposed to the Fighting Dark. Um, Choice Scarf, Surging Strikes, does so much damage next to Thunderous with the Rain Dance. Um, Thunderous, obviously, uh, usually at the moment in the meta game is being run as Defiant. This is a Prankster one with Thunderbolt, Rain Dance, Weather Ball, and Thunder Wave. Uh, it sets Rain Dance to help deal with Sun Teams, and Surging Strikes deals, like I said, from Urshifu, especially in the rain, deals so much damage. It's incredible. Incineroar comes in handy when you do need Intimidate. It, I, I do use the Incineroar not, not as often. The main four who probably come in this team are Zekrom, Comfy, Urshifu, and Thunderous. Incineroar comes when it's needed. And the, the probably least picked Pokemon is the Clefairy, which is a standard set, but instead of an offensive move, it has Sing, which makes it slightly vulnerable to Taunt, but it also means that you're not wasting turns going for, like, Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam, which isn't really doing a lot of damage. And yes, Sing is kind of a... Uh, <laughs> it's, a it's a bit of a shot in the dark, for want of a better term, but it can be really, really handy in some matchups. So it, it does have its place. Um... So, as I said uh, at the start of the video, we're going to talk about win conditions a little bit today. There are a couple of win conditions with this team. The obvious one being getting Zekrom set up and blowing through opponents. That does work, uh, especially with the floral healing on the comfy. If you look at your opposing uh, player's matchup and you think, you know what? He doesn't have too many threats to, or she doesn't have too many threats to Zekrom. Um, maybe just one or two. But particularly if it's just one, then you can say, you know what? I can lead Zekrom and I can um, I can go for my, my Draining Kiss into it and I can go for my, my big attack after I've boosted my weakness policy. Sometimes you can literally just blow through two or three turns, win the game that easily. Um, for example, Kyogre matchups are quite good. Uh, a weakness policy boost into Max Lightning often will one hit KO even Dynamax Kyogre. It doesn't always, depending on how they're built, but it can do. Um, so that's something to be, be aware of. Uh, it also can blow through various other team compositions as well. If you are able to set up Trick Room with Comfy Turn 1, uh, I can't tell you the amount of times I've, I've protected the Zekrom. I get hit with a max move, which triggers my weakness policy. I've then Trick Roomed with Comfy, and suddenly the, the opposing Pokemon is just sort of left dead in the water. I've got three turns of max, I'm already boosted, and it means I can heal myself with Comfy, or I can start getting rid of Focus Sashes with Draining Kiss. Um, so that is, your, that is win con number one. Um, you can also bring it in the back, Zekrom, um, again, against things like Kyogre or anything that isn't uh, a kind of, anything that isn't Xerneas as well, like even, even matchups that aren't great into Zekrom, if you're able to burn your opponent's max and leave it at the back, uh, it can come in and just destroy things. Because of the weakness policy as well, it, it tends to one-shot a lot of stuff if left uh, in the end game. The other win con is, um, that I play to quite a lot is Urshifu in the back because of the choice scarf and it's max max attack um it just picks up chaos like it cleans up really really nicely um to give you an idea uh surging strikes in the rain always ko's landerous dynamax um unless i mean i, I guess i probably haven't come up against a max hp max defense landerous but uh it pretty much always ko out speeds and ko's landerous uh so a big counter to zekrom you can use urshifu if you're able to get urshifu and landerous out on the field at the same time you tend to win the game it really is that good. Uh, the Urshifu is really, really impressive. Um, a couple of other people who tried the team out said they weren't sure on the Choice Scarf on the Urshifu, maybe they prefer Focus Sash or something, but truly it's um, it's really, really impressive. So uh, that's a win condition right there. Obviously you have the kind of, um, if you see a particular Pokemon weak to fire, you can. I have Max Incineroar on this team. It's not often I do, but I have done it as well. Um, Thunderous is Life Orb, so it actually does pack a punch. Um, it's naturally kind of bulky and does pack a genuine punch if, uh, if you want to leave it till the end. But basically what you're trying to do, I think, a lot of the time with this team is you, you have to look at the opposing, opposing matchup and say, can I blow through it with Zekrom? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, okay, I, I'll lead Zekrom. Be careful how you lead it. All right, make sure that you're not going to let Zekrom take too much damage, that you can't recover it back with floral healing, uh, and blow through them. If, you, if the answer is no, then the, the, the second question is, who, what do I need to do? Which Pokemon can I align to, to make sure that at the end of this game I will, 
I will win, right? Is there a Pokemon on my opposing side that I can ignore and Urshifu will clean up? Is there a Pokemon Thunderous might clean up? Or is there a Pokemon that Zekrom can clean up? If so, can I remove the threats to that Pokemon and then bring them in later, right? That's that's pretty much it. So uh, without any further ado, we'll get to the first game. Yeah, we'll do probably three, four games today, maybe, if we're really lucky. Probably three. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Alright, looks like we found our first match of the season against Connor. So, this looks very much like the team uh, that I've recently seen on a couple of uh, a couple of people use online. Obviously, it's a rain team. It's got it's got uh, the Volcarona, which is the interesting kind of component to it. Um, but that's fine. We can um, we can go with that, I think. So, uh, the good thing about the rain is that Urshifu does huge damage, like even to well, to pretty much everything on the team apart from maybe the, uh, the two actual water types, it does really, really huge damage. So what we're going to do is we're going to lead Comfy, we're going to lead Zekrom. I think I'm going to try and get a Trick Room up as soon as possible. Um, although it makes life difficult against the Escavalier, I think we should be okay. Uh, I'm going to bring the uh, Urshifu, and I'm debating bringing the Clefairy, but I think the wiser choice is probably the Thunderous. Um... Obviously, the, the Incineroar does deal well with the uh, with the Escavalier, but I think we shouldn't need it. Um, I think, hopefully, if we can get Zekrom set up, we shouldn't need the damage too much. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I haven't played against this exact team before. I've seen it on, on a couple of people's like YouTube channels, um, but I haven't played against it myself. So, uh, normally, this, this Zekrom team does fairly well in terrain. So, we'll see. Um, I'll be interested to see what he's going to lead. Uh, it's Kyogre Grimmsnarl, okay. So the good thing is, uh, my opponent doesn't have any electric resists, which is obviously really, really nice. Um, yeah, it is, I mean, it's obviously really, 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 really nice. So what we're going to try and do here, I think, is, uh, turn one. Turn one, I think, I'm going to... Look to get a little bit of chip into the... Ah, uh, do I get a bit of chip? Because it's Scarf Kyogre, which means it's more than likely going to be going for the Water Spout. So I'm going to actually... Although this seems kind of counterproductive, I'm going to Draining Kiss the Kyogre. And I'm going to Max Lightning the Kyogre as well. Um, because I feel... I feel that we, we could get Water Spouted here. He, he won't Max the Kyogre, we could get Water Spouted, and we obviously don't want that to happen. Um, so I'm pretty sure the, the opponent's team has Scarf Kyogre. So he doesn't Dynamax. Uh, or if he does Dynamax, he's slower than us. Uh, either of those things are kind of mostly okay. Uh, I don't remember if this is Trick Grim Snarl or not. If it is, obviously, the other thing I don't want to do is get my weakness policy stolen, so I will have to be aware of that. But I think Triage is like plus three, right? So it goes ahead of things like um, like Trick from, from a Prankster Pokemon. Okay, so we do get the Draining Kiss off, which means we, we will take a little bit out of what the Kyogre is going to do. Uh, Grim Snarl takes out. Which is really nice. Uh, yeah, so it does go for the water spout. And as you can see, just that little draining kiss there uh, is enough to to keep the Comfy alive. Uh, we, we removed the Kyogre turn one, which is really, really good for us. Um, we, don't, we take hardly anything onto the Zekrom. So now what we can do turn two, and one of the pieces of synergy that I really, really love about this team, provided we're able to get it off, of course, one of the things I really, really like about this team is that I can now draining kiss my own. Um, I can draining kiss my own Zekrom if I want to to get my boost. Actually, although come to think about it, right? What do you do if my, you're my opponent here? If I do, I even die from. If Kingdra targets the Zekrom, do I die? I don't know if I do. Um, okay, here's what I could do. I could Draining Kiss the Kingdra, and then also Max Lightning the Kingdra slot, presuming it's going to Dynamax. It should hopefully give Comfy some health back, and then if he goes for the Dragon move into my Zekrom, I'll set the Weakness Policy will get set that way, right? So, I think Zekrom survives a double up here. I really do. It's surprisingly bulky. Um, he's very likely, yeah, he's going to Max the Kingdra. Sorry, I kind of rushed that because I was trying to work out what I was going to do. This Zekrom has like a huge, well not huge, it's got uh, like HP and special defense investment. 
So, I'm hoping what that means is I can take a dragon attack from the Kingdra and a fairy attack from the Grimmsnarl uh, if I don't drain and kiss my own. Uh, if I don't drain and kiss my own Zekron, which I normally would to, to trigger the weakness policy. But what I've done is just give Comfy a little bit of health back. Grimmsnarl goes for the trick. Okay, it is trick Grimmsnarl. Uh, so we get the lagging tail, and he gets a weakness policy. So we're going to take a worm wind, which obviously now is not going to um, set off our weakness policy, but that's okay. Again, maybe a better a better move there would actually have been to set off our own weakness policy, but I just wasn't sure how much we take from a from a dragon attack from that king. This was to do good damage, as you can see there, and judging by what we took from that, I'm trying to work out whether floral healing actually help us. Probably not, right? Um, Okay, let me just think here. Can I floral heal? No, okay, so what I need to do is if I drain and kiss this Kingdra again. And then I think I can max guard, can't I? Can I max guard here? Because when, like, Urshifu comes in later and just cleans up, pretty much, it cleans up the Grimmsnarl. So I can max guard here because you have to target down the Zekrom, right? Otherwise you're just gonna Otherwise you're gonna be in real trouble. Which means I should be able to get two draining kits off here. So I get the first one. Right, perfect. We'll get a nice bit of health back. Uh, which is lovely. And then Fake Tears comes into the Zekrom slot, which would suggest that we're being followed by a Wormwind. Yes it is, which is really, really nice. Because now, of course, we're in that very, very nice situation where we can remove the Kingdra and uh, with a draining kiss. And if it max guards, then we will be able to get an attack off a Zekrom into the uh, into the Grimmsnarl. And if Grimmsnarl attacks Zek uh, into Zekrom, that's fine because then we get a free switch into Urshifu next turn. So pretty comfortable with this this as a play. Um, yeah, so we get a draining kiss off into the Kingdra, which takes it out. Very very nice. And as you can see, this Comfy is just like it's such a menace. You know, if you've never played against Comfy before, it is, it's honestly so annoying. Like, it's the most annoying Pokemon to be up against when you're not kind of set for it. Okay, the Grimmsnarl goes for the Spirit Break. Um, we, we probably won't survive that. Grimmsnarl has, um, Grimmsnarl has a really decent attack stat, like a lot better than people give it credit for sometimes. So now we can bring in Scarf Urshifu, um, which will clean up pretty nicely here. Yeah, pretty confident that we can uh, we can do a decent job here. I think. Um, I'm just trying to think of how we can. What's the best way to play this? Who do we need to remove? Because I think Thunderous beats Zapdos in the end, especially at full health. So I think we it might be worth us doubling the Grimmsnarl here. What's Grimmsnarl going to do? Right. What's the worst thing that happens? Let me just check my speed stat. If he, if Grimmsnarl tricks us, then what's our speed stat? 149, so then we are vulnerable to the Zapdos. Um, okay, so I think what we're going to do is Grimmsnarl... Yeah, I think we still need to target the Grimmsnarl, though, with Surging Strikes. Uh, we could get tricked. That's my main concern. Uh, Draining Kiss comes off. Does a nice little chunk. Um... I really don't want to get tricked here. If we get tricked here, we could be in a bit of bit of trouble. Um, activates his weakness policy. Wait, if he doesn't have an item, he can still trick us though, right? Um, okay, Grimmsnarl just goes for the fake tears. That's fine. Um, man, I need to learn my mechanics better. Because I'm just thinking, if, if he can still trick us with no item, right? Um, this is, like, always going to KO. Every single time. And also, he really, really really does not need to um does not need to have fake, fake tears does um i don't see any benefit to that whatsoever Zapdos goes for the thunder um i mean that's always gonna be be wiping us out but now we're okay so you see this is why the scarf urshifu comes in so so handy like it's so good um because it just comes in outspeeds everything and deals so much damage especially in the rain um you can you can oko a lot with surging strikes in the rain um it's really impressive how much how, how many things in the method will go down to it 
Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, we're actually running out of draining kisses now. Um, but we just need to chip away this Zapdos, basically. That's that's all we can do. Uh, plus, its life orb is going to do some damage to it. I don't think it really has much of a way to Okay, it's going to detect um, for some reason. Just to long the game, maybe. I think we should have this one sealed up. And it actually kind of displays quite nicely how the team works if if you don't get your weakness policy off with Zekrom, right? If you're in a, in a matchup like this where Zekrom was never in too much danger and you can just take KOs without um, triggering your weakness policy, the rest of the team really does come through. Much like the last team we featured, the reason I'm using these teams is because they offer you synergy. So even if you're not playing your best or even if the matchup isn't perfect or you're not brilliantly focused or any of that stuff, you can still... Uh, you can still play well, or not play well, you can still kind of pick up results without necessarily being at your absolute peak. Um, this huge damage, Life Orb Thunder is huge damage, but unfortunately not enough, and we do just close out the game and, and take our first win of the new season, which is very nice. Um, hopefully in the, in, the, in the coming games we can kind of get the... Uh, we can get the weakness policy off and you can see how much damage special Zekrom does. Uh, it, it is a lot. Like, it's a significant amount of damage. Um, okay. Uh, I don't want to check his team. I know what it is. Or I can check it. Okay, so, yeah, just to, like, to kind of, to sum up that game a little better, what happened was we knew our opponent's team, which is something, which is why we're doing this series, like, for my benefit. Like, that's why I'm doing this little series is because I want to know what's out there. I want to know that when the Players' Cup comes around, I know my opponent's team. So when I see a team that's a rental, I want to know what it is and what it does. And as it happened this time round, I did kind of know that, that I knew it was Scarf Kyogre, which means two things. If you see a Pokemon that is you know is Choice Scarf, it means two things. Number one, it's going to be really fast. And number two, it's probably not going to Dynamax. And when that Scarfed Pokemon is a Kyogre like that one, it's almost certainly going to be Water Spouting. And if you don't know the Water Spout mechanic, Water Spout and Eruption are the same. They do more damage the more HP that the Pokemon has. So Kyogre at full HP does significantly more damage than Kyogre after one Draining Kiss, right? So, you get a Draining Kiss, Comfy survives, and you also see how important Comfy is to this team. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, we'll cut to the next battle, and, um, and yeah, hopefully we can showcase the team a little bit more. Man, this matchmaking is taking a long time today. Oh. Get down! Crying out loud, Rosie. You've got water, you have toys, you have food. I just need an hour to record a video. That's all I need, little babe. Maybe more, depending on this fucking matchmaking. Christ! Oh. <clears throat> okay, so let's jump into this second match. Looks like we've got more rain. Uh, this time, I don't know the team as well, so I'll have to I'll have to make sure I'm on the ball for this one. It looks like a it looks like thunderous Kyogre stuff here, uh, which is interesting. So. Right, oh, yeah, okay, so do you remember at the start uh, of this, uh, we talked about wing cons, right, and how, what wing cons are and how we can play to them? Uh, if you look here, there are a couple of wing cons, right? Landorus up against my, uh, his Landorus up against my Urshifu is one of those wing cons, and also uh, isolating the Kyogre and the Zekrom is another one, or, or Zekrom and Thunderous. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to, um, I'm going to lead Thunderous, and I'm going to lead Urshifu like this. 
Um, and I'm going to bring Zekrom and Comfy in the back. Because Zekrom can be really, really good if we can remove the Landorus. And if I'm my opponent, unless I know the team really, really well, um, I think there's a good chance he's leading the Landorus into us here. Um, if he brings it at all. Because, like, okay, if, my, if, you're, if you're my opponent, you're thinking, I don't want to lead my Kyogre into Zekrom. That's the last thing in the world that I want to do, is I don't want to lead my Kyogre into Zekrom, right? Like, that's that's a given. That's pretty pretty much the thing. Um, so there's a good chance he brings the Landorus. If he brings the Landorus, even if it Dynamaxes in the rain, so either if he brings his own rain, or if we set our rain with the Thunderous, we will one-shot the uh, Landorus, I'm pretty sure. Uh, because although he obviously intimidates us, we get critical hits for Surging Strikes. So, yeah, let's see how he goes. He leads, uh, he leads Land Research Foot. All right. Okay. So he intimidates us, uh, which is fine. We don't mind that too much. And I think what we're going to do here is we are actually we're going to go for that. Uh, it may not work. You know these things don't always. But what I'm going to do is I am going to Rain Dance and. Uh, and surging strikes so that if he does max the landorus we will outspeed and i think we ko uh his obviously his urshifu will then have some stuff to do if it's banded it might knock us out but we'll see um i just want to i just really really hope this works so i can show you what you are able to do with this team uh so he is going to dynamax he's hoping it's the landorus come on landorus 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 Lander e. okay here we go this could be this could be today's coaching point. Um, provided there's no shenanigans here, we get the rain dance off. And this is again, if this works, this is where Scarf Ashfu comes in so handy, right? Um, Surging strikes comes out, and there you go. When uh, when I started this series last week, I said to you I wanted to show, kind of show, oh it's a berry. Oh, ah not enough berry. Citrus berry. Interesting. Citrus berry lander is that's cool. Um, I said to you I wanted to show you teams you could use for the players cup that might actually get you somewhere, right? And even though this team, I, I think Aaron Zeng showcased it like a week ago or something, it has been out there. It's still. Uh, I've been using a similar team on the ladder on showdown. I've made it slightly different um, But I've been using I've been using this sort of team and you would be amazed Absolutely amazed how many people don't know what it does like even though it's been on one of the kind of most famous VGC youtubers uh, YouTube out there, so you know, it's um It's incredibly impressive People don't know what Zekrom does a lot of the time. They think it's physical, so they lead, her in, they lead their Intimidator into it. Um, right, so here, again, right. So uh, we said at the start about win conditions. Sorry, I, I rabble sometimes. We said at the start about win conditions. And we know Dynamax Zekrom always beats Kyogre. So here, I'm pretty happy to double into the into the Urshifu. Uh, we might get water spouted, actually. Now I come, kind of come to think about it. I don't really want to get water spouted. So I might... I think Surging Strikes in the Rain picks up opposing Urshifu, right? Oh, I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, so I'm going to Draining Kiss the Kyogre, much for the same reason that I did in the last game. I think that's a fairly safe thing to do. Because we don't really want to get water spouted, right? Uh, he withdraws his Urshifu, okay, into... Ludicolo? No, into Tapulele, okay. So the Psychic Surge comes out, which doesn't really do too much. And this is really nice as well, because it, the Lele is the thing in the back, which, and I'm pretty sure we KO this now. Um, I'm pretty sure we, we will pick this up. Uh, the obvious is dangerous now, the Psychic Terrain comes out, which means we can't KO the, uh, we can't KO the Kyogre, which is a shame. So if it is going to Water Spout, we're going to take, uh, we're going to take a hit. Uh, let's see what it does. Water Spout, I no, it goes for the Thunder. Okay. That's actually not, that's not dreadful. To be honest, um, the main thing is Comfy didn't go down, uh, which is what we really, really needed. We really needed the Comfy not to go down there. It's Life Orb Kyogre, okay. So now, uh, as we spoke about, we have our end game condition, right? We have um, we have Zekrom in against 
uh, against the Urshifu and against the Kyogre. So, uh, the Urshifu is obviously a danger, and we don't want to uh, we don't want to let that thing go untouched. However, I think what we can do probably kind of safely here is actually go for a Trick Room, since we can't attack anyway. Uh, can we go for a Trick Room? Is that safe, or do we protect? Hmm. I think actually protect's not a bad play here. Hmm, do we? How do you KO the Comfy here? Can you KO the Comfy here? No, you can't, right? So let's trick him. No, let's trick him, because then that, that just means that we're in a really, really nice position next turn. He may even protect his Kyogre. Um, and since he's already taken the Life Orb chip, uh, I don't know if we would survive the Water Spout. Either way, he still has to do enough damage to the Zekrom to um, to make this worthwhile. Also, we can't protect from the Urshifu, so protect would have been... I, I think protect is probably not that useful. Okay, he goes for the Wicked Blow. Uh, we take that fairly well. Uh, next up is the Kaigo, goes for the Ice Beam. We take that as well. Um, sets off our weakness policy. And we now have the opportunity to use Floral Healing as well. So, uh, we'll remove the Kaigo. In hindsight, we could have targeted the Urshifu, but I didn't want to target into Sash, and then we take a double attack next turn. That would just not have been very useful at all. Uh, and now that we've um, now that we've reset the terrain, we actually, I think, probably uh, are safe to actually not target the Urshifu. We can go for a Draining Kiss into the Urshifu, and then target with our own uh, Zekrom. Let me explain that better and, and not rabble so much. <laughs> What I was saying is, now this turn, we can, in fact, let's max guard. No, 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 there's no need to max guard. Max guard is a way to throw the game. We max lightning. If he sucker punches us, so be it. Draining kiss into that Urshifu is going to definitely be enough to, 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 to hit KO. So this is always the play. If he's banded, he can't do anything anyway. And yeah, okay. So what I was trying to say there is, if he's choice banded, that was the play because he we get two attacks off he can't do anything to us if he wasn't choice banded he can sucker punch the zekrom if he sucker punches the zekrom and it goes down then comfy always ko's right always 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 uh within two shots which means he cannot beat us in that position unless we go for the max guard he is running a move that is able to take out the comfy um and in some weird circumstances he is able to do that it would be extraordinarily unlikely that he was, but it's still possible. And what you want to do as often as possible is remove any chance, right? Just remove any chance that you could lose for obvious reasons. Um, okay, we'll do another game with this team. Um, but yeah, do you see what I mean? In Like, you can pick up against very common teams, very common archetypes. You can pick up wins, and even there where... That was a slightly more odd team, not one that I've come across as often. You're still able to isolate things, right? You can isolate opposing Pokemon and your Pokemon so that you know, right, if I'm left Kyogre versus Zekrom, I'm always going to win. If I'm left Comfy versus Urshifu, I'm always going to win. If I'm left Urshifu versus Landorus, I'm always going to win. And you can, you can work that out from Team Preview, and that will always give you an edge, especially in something like the Players' Cup, where... If you have a surprise element to your team your opponent doesn't know about, you can sometimes uh, predict what they might do. So, you know, I'm running Zekrom, my opponent is, there's a good chance he's going to bring his Landorus, right? And I know that my Urshifu always beats his Landorus, so, yeah. Alright, let's jump into the next battle. Okay, looks like we found our third opponent of the day, and this is certainly a team uh, that I have not come across before. It looks like it's got... Okay, well, it's got the Snorlax. Is that the Golisopod? Or Golispod, whatever it's called. Carbink, Cinderace, Rillaboom, and Eternatus, the big poison, you know, the big poison dragon thing from Sword and Shield. Um, okay, how do I play this? I don't know anything about Eternatus. I don't know anything about Carbink. I don't really know anything about Golispod either. I mean... Zekrom blows through that entire team if you can remove the Eternatus, right? 
Uh, and this is why in the team that I, I, I messed around with, I swapped out the Clefairy for Mammoth Swine, because it's just so useful. Focus Sash Mammoth Swine is so good. Um, all right. All right, all right, all right. We can do, we can do this. I don't know what turn does. So that's the big issue. I, I really have no idea what it does. Um, so I think I'm going to bring Clef. No, because it's poison, right? Um, oh, this is tough. Um, do you know what? Let's go... Let's go Zekrom Clef. Let's go Comfy. And let's go uh, Shifu in the back. I th mm, well, we could even... Actually, we could bring Incineroar here. For the Intimidates. That could be and the Fake Out could be really useful. Yeah, I think this is the way to go. Um... It's a little bit... So this is really, really risky because it's totally, totally reliant on Zekrom. Um, if Zekrom goes down, we're just in huge <laughs> trouble. Um, but if Zekrom does not go down and Zekrom survives, then we're in lots of good... We're in, we're in good place, you know? Um, but I haven't come across this team, so this is this is really cool. Okay, he goes Gollispod and Rillaboom. Um, I think that Gollispod has that first impression move. I don't remember what it does. There's a lot I don't remember. Uh, he'll set the Grassy Surge. Oh, it's really nice to have a um, to have your main Dynamax target resist Grass uh, in, in a Rillaboom meta. It's really, really nice. So what I'm going to do here is, it's a bit passive, I know. But I know Rillaboom has Fake Out. I know Gollispod has, that, has something that it does on turn one. I can't remember exactly what it is. But I'm going to double protect. Um, because I think double protect is the way to go here. Let's scout out what he's going to do because I've got just no idea. And I want to try and learn as much as possible. Uh, as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, looks like he's not Dynamaxing. So Zekron protects. And Clefairy protects. A little Clefairy. First impression. That's the move. It is the move. It is first impression. And he goes for the Grassy Glide. Okay. So first impression is a bug move, right? From memory? Do I need to do anything here other than follow me and attack into that Gollus spot? I don't think I do. What does he have as a switch in to an electric type attack? He doesn't have anything. Okay. Let's go for that. I don't really want Clef to die. Um. But I think that's, this is probably okay. I think this is okay. I really don't. I'm really not sure. He Dynamaxes. Okay. Um, well, this is this is good because I don't know. I, I don't know what Eternatus does. I don't know how fast it is. I don't know what his deal is. Um, but anything that we can do, any damage we can get off in this scenario is really nice into a Dynamax Pokemon. I feel like Golispod has bad special defense, right? I think it does. Rillaboom protects, even better. Um, that's really, really nice. We use Follow Me. Are we faster than Goddess Spot? Is it slow? I don't really know what it does. Oh, that's pretty nice. No weakness policy. Max Flutterby. Ah, oh, okay. Doesn't do very much to us, but that does lower our special attack, right? Um, okay, I think that's kind of fine. I think that's mostly fine. Uh, we all get some nice recovery. Yum yum yum. All right. What are we taking into Zekrom slot here? Like Grassy Glide and maybe the Max move again. I actually think we can go to Incineroar here, which is why I brought it, and just protect Clef and keep Clef alive. Um, try and stall out his max. Why is it that game three, I think it was game three in the last episode as well, we came up against something which I don't know what it is or what it does. And I mean, this this team my opponent has, I haven't got a clue what it does. We get Intimidate off, uh, which is pretty sweet. Um, let's see what happens next. Grassy Glide. Uh, we protect, obviously. Uh, we protect, goes for the Grassy Glide. Into a protect, even better. Uh, what do you do? Max Flutterby again, okay, into, into that slot, pretty, pretty nicely taken, um, pretty nicely taken indeed, two turns of his max successfully stalled, 
and we get some nice recovery again. Uh, which is pretty nice. Okay, things going fine. And we still preserve Zekrom and we still preserve Comfy in the back. Um, uh, I really like the idea of trying to take out Rillaboom here, but I don't want to risk anything I don't need to. We can fake out the Rillaboom. And... Hmm... Can we do anything more useful than just follow me? We could we could go for a blind sing, right? Fake out Rillaboom and go for a blind sing into the into the Goddess pot. Oh, we could do that. Yeah, I don't really know what else Clefairy's going to do here. I'd like to preserve Clefairy for later if possible, um, so that if that Eternatus thing does come out, we get a free hit into it. Goes for the geyser? Okay. Oh right, yeah, it's bug and water. Okay. That's alright. I'm actually not unhappy about that. Uh, Incineroar goes down. Not ideal. Go on, sing. <laughs> Yay! Yay, Clefairy! Good job, Clefairy. You're the, you're the best. Oh. Excuse me. This happens sometimes with my capture card. Uh, it just stops working, which is really, really annoying. Uh, so, I don't know what's going on now, nor do you. Okay. We're back. We're back in! Gosh, I hate when that happens. I need a new capture card. Okay, we're going to bring in Zekrom, and we're going to keep Comfy in the back. Um, Godless Apod is asleep. It's definitely taking another turn of sleep here. All right. I think we worm wind into the Godless Apod. Is he? How, what does he have in the back? Let's have a think. Uh, what is fairy types he got? He does have fairy capabilities. Um. So we don't really want to be going for that dragon move straight off the bat here. Um, oh, we could sing the Rillaboom. <laughs> we could try and sing the Rillaboom, that is true. Or we just preserve Clefairy and preserve the friend guard, right? Yeah. Just preserve the friend guard. Um, I don't mind trying to take out the Goddess Pod here. Uh, let's see what he goes into. Eternatus? Okay, this is this is fine, because now we have the ability to, to target Eternatus next turn. Also, I'd like to see how much damage we do to this thing. Uh, it's dragon type, right? Eternatus, so it um it will resist this electric attack. But I feel I was close to clicking Wormwind into that slot, but on the off chance he switched into the carbink, that would have been catastrophically bad. Right, that would have been like a really, really bad, it would have been an absolute waste of a turn. Um, Clefairy protects. Rillaboom, Grassy Glides, into the protect. Mark of a good protect. Can we get the lightning off? Does this do anything? It does a little bit. All right. Um, Carbink, Carbink, Carbink. What is that thing's ability? Does it get Levitate? Does Carbink get Levitate? And how fast is Eternatus? What does Eternatus do? Uh, Carbink. No, I spelled that wrong. I think what we're going to do is Quake into the Eternatus slot. And follow me. Uh, I'm going to try and find out what Carbink's ability is. If it has Levitate, that would be very annoying. I don't think it has levitate, I think it has something else. Clear body or sturdy? Okay, that's what we're doing then. I don't want to drag a move because I still don't want to get switched in on the carving. Haha! -ha! And that is why! That is precisely why. So our opponent clearly knows his team well here. Um, 
we do, he does go for the follow me. Uh, sorry, we go for the follow me, which is a bit of a waste. Carving takes that surprise, like reasonably well, to be fair. Um, and it, well, our opponent's playing pretty well. Like, you can't, you can't, um, can't deny him how well he's doing here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the carving slot alone. And I'm going to... Wait, does it get ally switch? I hope it doesn't get ally switch. I'm going to worm in the goddess bot in case we get switching on that slot. I bet it does get ally switch, doesn't it? Is that sort of... Oops, did a swear word. Does it get ally switch? Do you get ally switch? I bet you do. Everything gets ally switch now. This is why it's important to learn the meta. Um, I could helping hand, I could protect, I could sing. Let's sing, let's sing the carving slot. Let's see what happens here. Goddess Pot is fast asleep. Good. Oh, fuck's sake. I couldn't see it on the internet in time. Oh my god, what a clown. Uh, we're, we're still not in dreadful shape here. Um, we're not in the worst shape in the world. We can still we can still make some stuff happen. Uh, I'm gonna rising voltage the uh, Collis pod in hopes. I really want to. I do want to remove that, uh, and I'm just gonna sing the same slot. That's the plan. That is the rough plan. I'm hoping we can still pull this back um, by being able to abuse our weakness policy in a little while. Uh, I think if we can leave Rillaboom next to, okay, switches out into Rillaboom. Okay. This is exactly why we went for the sing. Because hopefully, I mean, if we can land it, it'll be absolutely huge. Um, okay, goes to the ally switch again, which means hopefully we can remove this stupid thing. I don't know how much it will take from this. Rising voltage comes out. Uh, oh God, this car bink is real annoying. We actually land a second sing in a row, uh, which is extremely lucky. All right, we're in for a game now. This is going to be interesting. We okay, so let's take a little stock of where we are, right? We still have Zekrom at full HP. Um, we still got Zekrom at full HP. We can go for a let's rising voltage the carving slot, and let's sing into Villaboom. Because I don't think he can damage us too badly. He's gonna fake one of us out, but this is what we can do. I wanna, be, I need to save a Draco Meteor for the Eternatus, and I need ideally to keep Clef alive as well. Um, he's uh, switching the Gollus Spot is helpful for him because it keeps it. Um, in grassy glides, okay. And Zekrom that does nothing. Um, Rising Voltage will KO the Carving, which is pretty nice. Um, Sing is definitely going to land, 100% going to land into Rillaboom. <laughs> oh my god, do you know what, do you know what, to be fair, if I were him, if I were my opponent right now, I would be fairly annoyed um, about this uh, state of events. Right, now I'm going to do some quick googling. Quick googling time. What priority is first impression? into his Eternatus. I still don't know what it does. Eternatus might have some sort of spread move, which I don't know about. Um, it may well do. Okay, follow me is a higher priority than first impression, so that's good. That's good to know. I think there's every single chance in the world that he does not let me do this, and he's going to try and stay uh, awake, or it has a spread move or something I don't know about. But... This is all I know what to do. This is all I know how to do. We follow me. Good start. Protect the Eternatus. Rillaboom is asleep. Eternatus goes next. Goes for the sludge bomb. Please land Draco Oh, we actually take that like an absolute wall. An absolute wall, Clefairy. Uh, that KOs the Eternatus, um, which is very nice. Our special attack harshly falls. Uh, we can deal with that. Okay, 
So that's really good. Now he... I don't think he has any more super effective damage into Zekrom. Um, so I'm going to switch Zekrom out now to get my special attack back so that if I can't get it next to Comfy and stuff my weakness policy, I'm still safe. So you come out. Uh, in for you. In you come, Comfy. Gosh, this has been a hell of a... hell of a game. Uh, we protect. Keep Clef alive. This has been an incredible game. I mean, I've got so lucky. I've landed three sings in a row. And this is why it's so difficult when you come up against a team you don't know, and also so difficult when you have no idea what the meta is. Because, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think this is popular. I don't think this is a popular team, but it, it could be. Okay. From what we've seen so far, opposing Rillaboom has Grassy Clyde and it has Protect. That's all we know. So, what I know is, uh, we can leave, probably leave that alone, right? Can we leave it alone? I feel like Golospod doesn't get any healing. So let's Helping Hand, we're going to Helping Hand, we're going to Draining Kiss. Uh, to try and put a bit of chip on the Golospod. I don't really know, we, we don't really have a lot of offense out now, but I, I don't want to... I really want to free switch into Zekrom, so, you know. And I don't think the Rillaboom can hurt us. So we're going to help your hand draining kiss. Uh, you know, because that's normal. This is this is very normal. This is really normal. Uh, happens a lot. Huge damage. Actually, does, <laughs> doesn't actually do dreadful damage. Who are you going into? I into Clef. Uh, that's fine. That's definitely fine. Goddess Pod wakes up. Goes for liquidation. We'll survive that. Okay. Alrighty then. So what we're going to do now is we are... The grass goes. The grass is gone, which means no more grassy glide BS. And I think that means Zekrom should probably be faster than the Rillaboom. And he hasn't shown his high horsepower yet. So I'm not going to drain and kiss... I'm not going to Draining Kiss Zekrom in case we end up doing enough damage to ourselves to KO ourselves and then uh, by by getting double hit. I'm pretty sure we're faster than Golispod, right? Like, we have to be faster than Golispod. So I'm going to Draining Kiss Rillaboom to get a bit of chip. I'm going to Rising Voltage to Golispod and hope that we don't take too much from Rillaboom. So let's see how this goes. Draining Kiss comes out. Uh, that's going to do like 90%. Oh no, it doesn't. It does like nothing. That's a sh huge shock. Um, okay, who's next? We're next. That's huge. That's massive. Um, so Goddess Pod goes down, which means I think we're going to... We, we should win this one. Unless he knocks us out with high horsepower. No, he just goes for Grassy Glide. Uh, which still does a lot of damage. I wonder if that's a choice ban. No, 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 no. Of course it's not. It's, it doesn't do that much. Um, let's do this, and let's do this, but I think we should have this one. I mean, like, it's important to know that we got extremely lucky here by putting things to sleep. Like, uh, that is, that is just not, not a, a normal win call. But, it also shows you why, like I said at the top of this video, uh, I've built a similar team to this. My original plan was to use Palkia for Players Cup, but I'm debating actually now using Zekko to get crit as well. This is ridiculous. Um, I'm really sorry to my opponent. Not that he would probably ever see this, but uh, GG. He played really well. But yeah, this is what I was saying, right? Um, I, Clefairy's good, and it showed in this matchup why it's good, but Sing is so unreliable. If we miss even... Uh, if we miss one of those Sings, we're probably still okay, but if we miss two out of three, which is pretty, like, reasonable odds, we're screwed. We're, like, we're absolutely screwed. We're never going to be able to do anything so yeah i don't know it's um yeah there you go that's the zekron team i don't even think we got to use the weakness policy so maybe we'll use it again um we didn't get to self-proc uh but maybe maybe we will again we will get to use it one day and we will so um yeah it's a good team the synergy is good the all-round usage is good the special zekron is really really handy and with a bit of luck you can you can do really well with it so yeah that's that's me um Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a very, very good day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.